This is Duke University. So uh, my name is Jonathan Lee. I'm a second year student here at uh, the MBA school. So thank you for coming out for the uh, Duke Cyber Challenge IT Media Track pitch. Uh, for those of you who aren't really familiar with uh, Duke Cyber Challenge, it's a uh, campus-wide organization and we host a series of uh, entrepreneurial competitions throughout the year. The first one is the Elevator Pitch Competition, which you guys are here for. Uh, and the second one is the uh, Executive Summer Competition. So if you're in the audience, you're not pitching, but you want a chance to uh, participate uh, in a business plan competition, the executive summary uh, competition is a way to do it. Once you advance uh, through that, uh, you get to pitch uh, in December, in uh, February, in front of uh, live uh, investors for a chance to advance to the uh, April 15th uh, Duke Summer Challenge finals for a chance to win $25,000. So as you can see, uh, it's divided into uh, eight tracks, uh, the functional tracks as well as the undergrad track and uh, track for women. This year, uh, we had a uh, a lot of undergraduate students uh, participate, so we divide it into uh, two tracks. So as I mentioned, uh, five uh, functional tracks, three specialty tracks, and that's how uh, the participants broke out. Uh, the way this will work is that you can advance to the finals on Friday in two ways. You could either get the judges' vote, or you can uh, get the audience vote. And I'll talk more about how the audience uh, choice vote is done uh, towards the end of the night. Uh, so Friday is the final, um, starts at uh, 7.30 in Janine. Uh, this year's keynote speaker is uh, David Thacker, who is a uh, venture capitalist at Greylock on the West Coast. As you can see, they've invested in some uh, well-known companies, including LinkedIn, uh, Zipcar, uh, Pandora, and uh, Facebook. I'm sure you guys know about Facebook. And uh, here are the judges uh, for, the, uh, for the night. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Actually, if you could uh, just take maybe a couple minutes to introduce uh, yourselves to the audience, that would be great. Sure. Um, I'm Jess Lipson. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called ShareFile. We provide a um, software as a service business file sharing tool. Um, we have about 40 employees, almost 13,000 corporate customers, and 1.7 million users. And I graduated from undergrad at Duke in 2000. Hi, everyone. I'm Brooks Bell, the president of Brooks Bell Interactive. And one fun fact is that I'm married to this guy. <laughs> uh, we do A-B testing, conversion path optimization for primarily subscription companies. So we help them increase their, their customer acquisition with better creative and better strategy. Uh, I'm Joe Velk. I graduated from Fuqua in 85, and I was a partner with a couple of venture funds for 18 years. And now I've got several uh, early stage IT companies that I'm an investor or on the board of. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm Jed Carlson. I'm co-founder and COO of ReverbNation.com. We are a software as a service uh, tools provider to independent musicians, um, helping them uh, take advantage of what the internet can offer in terms of promotion and marketing of music. I graduated in 05 from Fuqua. My name's Mike Rasmussen. I graduated uh, 03 from Fuqua. I'm the president and CEO of Republic of Fun. We're a game publisher and developer, and uh, we use crowdsourcing, fan sourcing to build up excitement about our games in the digital download space to deal with some of the pain points that publishers and, and developers are facing um, with the hope that uh, we then have a built-in fan base when we release our games and uh, can support them with a, an effective marketing campaign within our community. Thank you. So the, this is how it's going to work tonight. Uh, last year, uh, for those of you who finished, you get two minutes and uh, I think I three minutes uh, for questions or for Q and A. This year, it's a one minute pitch, so you get one minute, not a second more. We're going to cut you off. Uh, and then the judges will ask uh, one question, and after they are done asking their question, you have one minute uh, exactly to uh, answer their question. And we do that so that you don't turn the uh, Q and A uh, session into another extended pitch. So one, one, one. Oh, and uh, one thing about the slide transition, for if you're not familiar with this room, uh, you want to use this clicker, and uh, you'll see uh, an arrow. So click on the right one, or the one uh, below right here, and point to that right there, the projector. Don't point at the computer, because it won't work. 
Uh, as I mentioned, uh, two teams will advance, uh, the audience choice and judge's choice. Now, if the audience choice and the judge's choice is the same team, then uh, the runner-up from the judge's uh, choice will advance. Uh, and after one minute, we'll show you uh, this sign. And uh, when you see this sign, you say? Stop. 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 A little louder. Stop. 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 <laughs> All right, and with that, uh, <laughs> we can now uh, start the competition. Uh, let me grab my The first team up is Vocab. Where are you, Vocab? Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that, so uh, the team in front of you has finished pitching, and they're answering uh, questions from the uh, judges. You want to line up uh, either here or here, so uh, we can uh, get you going. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, one second. <laughs> kind of. So, whenever you're ready, I can use that remote. Whenever you're ready, just start and I'll start time. So, imagine for a moment that you're trying to learn a language, say Spanish. Imagine also that there's a song in Spanish that you really like, but you have no idea what the words in the song mean. With this product, you'll be able to listen to that song and at the same time see the lyrics and the translation of that song as it's playing. Think of something like a karaoke without having to sing the song. So, <clears throat> so after hearing the song uh, for a couple of times and reading the translation, you will start to understand the song and what it means. And <clears throat> After understanding the song, uh, you will be able to. Oh. <laughs> You'll be able to see. Um... Stop. Stop. <laughs> All right. One question. One question. Oh, yeah. one question. So it's. It's a, it's, a, it's a neat idea. Um, can you tell us kind of how the business model will work? Yeah, sure. So um, basically a, uh, a user will buy the, um, the option to, um, to in introduce a song into the system and then he will be able to read that song, to hear that song and at the same time see the lyrics and the translation of each word with the intention of learning each word um, that the song has. So he will purchase the right to do so and that's what will make the profit. Uh, there's no violation to copyrights or because the, the, the user will, buy, will have that song purchased previously and he will also provide uh, the lyrics and the translation to that song. So basically he'll learn every single word in that song. Thank you. Articles is a website and a concept that is going to revolutionize the way we read and learn about professional journal articles in the same way that Cliff's Notes and Spark Notes revolutionize the way we read literature. A smart article is a one page summary of everything that you need to know about a journal article and nothing more. A website is designed wiki style in the way that it's regulated and the way that the summaries are submitted. And we have a strict quality um, standard, only accepting submissions from PhD students postdocs and people who are already professionals. Um, the topics of, of all the article journal articles um, summaries range from business to engineering to science to medicine. Um, we cover a full width and I think this is a good way to get smarter and smarter. So how do you actually how do you make money? Oh, I'm going to keep the site totally free. I want it to be very accessible and to have a very large user base. But I want to make money off of targeted advertising, like Facebook style, where it'll. Uh, I want to find a program that will track the way 
the, all the past searches of the users and see what kind of um, smarticle summaries they're actually looking at and then take that information and target it. Say, if, for example, if they're only looking at um, medical journal articles, then um, pharmaceutical industry um, advertisements will be the ones showing up on the side of the page. <coughs> In today's job search, there is a huge disconnect between active job seekers and employers. The result is an inefficiency in time and money from both ends. Job stock will drastically reduce the resources drained by both employers and job seekers. Like LinkUp, we directly comb and data mine company career pages for job opportunities, but with one significant advantage. We show jobs rather than listing them. We've created a map that displays who's hiring relative to the competitors in each company, sector, and industry. Simply by looking at the map, job hunters know how many jobs are in each company and direct their online application efforts in the most efficient, sensible way possible. With the online recruitment industry at $16 billion and 25% comprised of advertising, offering inexpensive initial ad space will create buzz around our product. We currently require seed funding of $100,000. This enables us to complete our web development, build IP, and move forward with our marketing strategy. Help JobStock unburn the unemployed, underemployed, and unsatisfied job seekers stuck in today's online job search. Thank you. Um, so just to clarify, you are, you're not planning on charging employers. They're not going to be posting. You're going to be scraping job listings from elsewhere, and you're going to be advertising supported. So. Right, so we're not a job aggregator, which would be your monster and your career builder. Career builder. Uh, what we plan on doing is pay-per-click advertising. So particular to sectors on the map, like let's say biotechnology and healthcare, we would charge either a niche aggregator like pharmaopportunities.com, where that real estate is really popular, or a bigger aggregator like Monster. We would redirect users towards their uh, jobs posted. So that's, that's basically our initial revenue model. Our second would be to actual, actually license this map, customized to <coughs> Monster, Career Builder, uh, in order to make their sites as efficient as ours. Thank you. Next up is time for work, is that right? Let's say you want to study from nine to 12. <laughs> Let's say you want to study from 9 to 12, but like most young people, you don't end up getting much done. You find yourself distracted on Facebook, YouTube, ESPN, Twitter. You, like the other 43.6 million high school, and college, high school and college students, and 500 million plus users on Facebook, spending over 7 billion minutes a month, need a software to help you better manage your time. That's where we come in. Time to work. Time to work will offer users two options. One, time constraint. Two, time allotment. It's superior to the other products here for three reasons. One, demonstrated need among our target market. One in eight Americans suffer from problematic internet use. Among college students, we're all addicted to the internet. Two, highly profitable. Once you overcome the cost of marketing and production, it's almost all revenue. Three, lack of real competition. There are only two other time management softwares that are aimed at upper level managers and parents. None are aimed at college students and none will give the services that we will give. Time to work. Visit us at itstimetowork.com. So, could you explain a little bit more about the product itself and then and the business model behind it? Is it, is it a piece of software that sits on a piece yeah. on a computer? Um, our plan is that you would download it from our website. And um, unlike the other time management softwares, which are internet plugins, um, <coughs> this would give users the option to put in the domain names of the sites they want to block. And then if you want to do the time constraint method, you'll say, I want to block it from this time period to this time period, or a time allotment. I just want only this number of hours per day. And all these capabilities already exist in software. None of it has just been consolidated and built into this software aimed at this target market. So it really won't be that difficult to produce. And then um, since we'll be selling it through the website, you'll just download it through there. We won't have the cost of like actually physically producing the software. So it'll be very low overhead. 
we were thinking a ten dollar yeah. one time download fee, which contrasts with, with a lot of the other things out there, which are monthly fees that are relatively mm -hmm. expensive. Also, if, if you contact us through our website, we'll send you our business plan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. There are some uh, empty seats there, so if you could actually grab a seat, uh, so people can move in and out uh, as they need to. You're not empty. Maybe some of you can go and uh, line up against that wall, I guess. That's the uh, yeah, guys want one in and out more freely. <laughs> like this, you encounter these captures frequently online. They are difficult to decipher, illegible, and downright annoying. It takes 10 seconds of your focused attention to complete one. And businesses spend billions of dollars every year on online ads that you're never even going to look at. Combine these two ideas and you get AdOps, a company that revolutionizes the authentication process by providing consumers a less frustrating experience. If you have their attention, use it. Why not replace a standard captcha, like that one, with a branded advertising message? <laughs> Online ads have a click-through rate of only 0.04%. AdApps model ensures 100%. Think about the potential ROI you can have from consumers interacting so intimately with the brand. Furthermore, AdApp tailors the ads that consumers see based on their past search history, so ads are increasingly more relevant and have a higher rate of um, leading you to point of purchase. In the end, AdApp creates a new market for both online advertisers and online hosting companies, with both profiting from a heightened consumer experience. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the other competitors in the market right now? Significant solutions. I think right now there are a few companies that have this idea of somehow combining advertising with captchas, but it's not widespread at all. Um, and they also don't have this targeted marketing um, algorithm that will help uh, target the ads that consumers see based on you know what they're used to searching. So you know when you go into your Gmail, you see ads based on what you're reading. Um, we are kind of copying that method so that you know if you're searching for something like dinner recipes. Prego's ad might be there, so you're more likely to click on it, and it's better for advertisers. talk to you today about reclaiming your data. I'm sure everyone in this room manages all of their online accounts through a variety of places. Probably deal with accounts like these, different websites, kind of a pain to manage. There's 50 million people in the US that manage accounts online and run into the same problem. So I'm introducing LifeDash. LifeDash is a simple concept. It's an online dashboard that busy professionals or students who are away from home can utilize to gain access to their online accounts. But instead of overloading the user with data, LifeDash provides streams of relevant information. So you have one place to manage your life online, and based on the information that you're managing, you get relevant deals. So you can spend money the way you're spending, but do it better and smarter. Reclaim your data, life dash. <laughs> so good, there's nothing about that. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> I have a question. So what what does the actual product look like? I mean, what what is the interaction with the customer? How are they actually going to interact with your product? Sure, the product, the, the concept is a platform. So it can be through a website, it can be through a smartphone app or an iPad app, or really any way possible. 
The product itself looks like a simple single page dashboard where you would have similar to a widget concept. You might have a widget that is AT&T, 400 minutes left, $37 bill due Tuesday. Duke Energy, uh, $45 bill due Thursday. It cuts out all the crap basically and gives you single streams of data that have to do with what's important to you. So you're basically getting <laughs> access to not, in, not just kind of this overload of bill information or account information, but you're going to get stuff that's important to you. If you travel a lot, you might be concerned about how many segments you need to get gold on American Airlines. That's the information that you'll see. So imagine a single page website, or perhaps a single screen in the uh, Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. it just has that stream of data, a single view. But thanks. <laughs> Mufu offers cloud computing um, solutions for creative media production. Essentially, Mufu is like Google Docs, but for creative media production, such as graphic design, video editing, and music production. It brings all the advantages of cloud computing, such as real-time collaboration, data backup, access from anywhere, and the potential to increase your processing speed. So Mufu's functionality can uh, allow companies to become much more streamlined and increase efficiency. It also allows artists with many different backgrounds to be able to collaborate without having to be in the same studio. So they can record, edit, and create music simultaneously. Uh, it's also very effective for time-sensitive time products, such as uh, newspapers and magazine publication. So yeah, currently, we're considering using open source platforms, such as Cultura for video editing. And we're discussing our ideas with professors. Um, well, there's a lot of music professionals who like do collaborations, and yeah, so yeah, there's a pretty large market. But I don't know the exact numbers. I mean, we know we know a Duke student uh, who uh, yeah. works with artists from New Jersey and uh, all over the country, and I'm, he, I, we talked to him about this idea. He, he thought it was really really cool. Oh, well, yeah, he knows people he works with. But be open to it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rob Kahaya. This is Alex Yen, and we are cheatedon.com, where you tell the truth. With fifty percent of with a fifty percent divorce rate and fifty percent of men and women admitting to having engaged in infidelity or an affair throughout their lifetime, cheating has caused a lot of pain and suffering, both indirectly and directly to those involved in the relationship. Through cheatedon.com, users will be able to create a profile of someone who's cheated on them. Users will be given <laughs> complete control over what they post and who they share this information with. So what's this do? First, it creates accountability, holding cheaters accountable for their actions. Second, it opens communication and creates a platform for people who have been cheated on to confront someone who's cheated on them, and then hopefully move on and resolve their issues. So, revenue will be generated primarily through online advertising, and also possibly through smartphone applications. It's our hope that this will reduce instances of cheating and hopefully help people hold themselves more accountable. So, you said that um, people will be able to share cheaters' profiles with other people, mm -hmm. only the ones they choose. Mm -hmm. It seems to me there might be some legal issues, liable things like that. Sure, um, sure. and that's but, definitely one of the. Sorry, go oh, ahead. So, but it, if if it's limited in that way, don't we already have a tool for this called email, where you just tell your friends who cheated on you? Is it, what's <laughs> help me understand the difference if there's going to be great control? Um, okay. Um, well, sure. They're they're really. I mean, this will create a place for it's kind of like a Facebook kind of type of platform that we'll be looking at here. And although there are legal issues involved with that, and although you do have email, um, you know this will this will really create a kind of a way for people to really weigh in on the situation. So if it's just the person that cheated on you, or if it's like your friends and family that you you know you invited to come and say, hey, look, this is this is what happened here, um, they'll be able to like kind of weigh in and be like, hey, look, let's get a funny on that issue. So uh, that's how it'll be different because people will kind of be able to weigh in almost in real time. And as far as the legal issues go. Uh, 
you know, through limo liability corporations in terms of conditions and even some like kind of aggressive uh, uh, pop-ups, we'll be able to communicate that users are liable for what they say and do on the website. Yeah, like users are responsible for whatever they, the information they put on the website. Thanks. Right, next up is Sidewalk. <laughs> Sidewalk is real-time on-demand promotions for local businesses. Local merchants tell us some of their biggest problems are variability in foot traffic. This is due to time of day, day of week, or inclement weather. But it's these down periods when customers are the most valuable. Our solution gives those businesses control through tools that allow them to create time-sensitive deals they can push directly to your mobile phone via our app in real time. In addition, Pandora-like intelligence ensures that users only get deals that they care about. We have momentum and we're confident in our ability to execute. We've developed the technology and we'll be launching our product this Friday to 100 test users and 15 local businesses around campus. We're partnering with the Duke Chronicle to sell and advertise our product, negotiating a $50,000 investment with them, and the final rounds for a $50,000 grant from NCIDF. Today, we ask you to invest in us and our business. Thank you. So, so it, do you, how do you give like permission to the businesses to target you, and, and, and how are you going to scale it with um, the consumers who are using with the customers? So we're advertising it through a, a distribution channel. Right now we're targeting college campuses, and so we're selling, right now we're selling directly to the businesses. We're also going to have the, the student newspapers to sell to those businesses. The Duke, uh, Duke Chronicle sells over 600 advertisers in a year. We're also developing an automated system to sell directly to businesses. Um, they'll also do advertising for us to their student market. And I guess you, users download the app, and then they use Pandora-like controls to say what they like and what they don't. And then that self-selects them into, their, into that target. So, and then the, the businesses just sign up and they're able to create deals when they want. Yeah. Next up is, are you shelfing? Uh, no, I think I'm afraid to call it. Okay, you're not. They already used it. So if there's a friend help, just let me know if we're ready. Just advance the slide. Okay. All right, I advance it. Hi, so my name is Andrew Brown. I'm here to tell you about friend help. So that we joined two ideas. First, it's really a pain in the ass to go out and make plans with your friends and decide what you want to do on Friday night. Second, if you're a local merchant business owner, how cool would it be if you could predict the future and know where people were going to go? We built a, a product that solves this problem. So you would go on FriendCal, create a group, sort of like a Facebook group, put in five or six of your friends, and make a tentative plan about where you want to go, say pizza on Friday and Durham. We then have a self-serve platform for merchants where they can go on, and based on time of day, size of the group, and also demographic uh, factors, offer you discounts or deals based on where you want to go. So if you're putting in a pizza place, you might get, say, a, a discount from Enzo's or from a particular other restaurant here in Durham. In this way, we let users make decisions in part based on what's cheapest. As a user, all you do is you print the discount from our site using it, it's totally free. And for a business, it's also free to go and actually put on a discount up. So. Oh, you get a cut of the deal? Right, we get a cut of the coupon, yeah. yeah so in the, the businesses then only, they, it's totally free for them to post. They only pay us once someone actually uh, either prints or uses the deal. Um, initially, we're planning to go with a print model and we'll get you know just a certain percentage of that uh, based on the number who typically use it. But definitely moving forward, we want to go to more mobile coupons that are actually being scanned uh, and used in that way in order to make it an actual point of sale. When someone uses the coupon, we get that cut, uh, and you don't pay for it until they use it. 
So there's really no downside because you don't actually you know, pay anything until you've attracted that customer into your business. Picture this, uh, you want a sandwich, you have the ketchup, you reach up for the mustard, but it's empty. Isn't that frustrating? <laughs> so with Grocery Me, what we plan to do is emulate the power of just-in-time inventory control, but for groceries. We plan to automate grocery tracking and purchasing and eliminate the user from the entire process. So how do we do this? The first part is to, to, to bootstrap this process. We collect data at point of sale at, at various supermarkets. And secondly, we, uh, to, to identify user patterns. Secondly, we, uh, we use a learning algorithm to, sort of, I, I, to, 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 to measure product consumption. And the, the way we do this is first we, um, we use cloud data from historical point of purchase sales, as well as user input to further in enhance the precision of our algorithm. And finally, the kicker though is, at, at some point we're gonna reach uh, complete automization where we do not have the user ever enter a grocery store again. Uh, yep. So, um, if I understand correctly, you'll use historical data about how long it would normally take somebody to use a jar of mustard plus them potentially entering it in. Exactly. How do you uh, deliver that? Uh, mustard to the user to replenish their supply. Okay, so we're going to be tying up with, say, a large supermarket or like a large grocery store. So they have historical data already, and at point of sale, they know what, like what the users bought. So we basically are a repository of what, how much the users use, and we send a like say a command to the supermarket saying that okay, this person has lost this much, has done, has depleted this much of ketchup based on the average consumption of like ketchup or whatever. So in a sense, we are, we are connecting the user to the supermarket at a very like intimate level. That's how we're gonna do it. And the delivery is gonna be taken care of by the supermarket. So we don't handle that. We are like the data, data engine. MyBlocks seeks to create a cool culture around the idea of mobile tagging and QR codes. My, and MyBlocks is a mobile QR code application that will allow retailers to directly connect with consumers at the point of inquiry or at the point of purchase and deliver information to the consumer's fingertips. MyBlocks will provide a way for retailers and advertisers to more accurately enhance the return on their print advertising, assess the uh, visibility of advertising to the consumers, and determine how receptive consumers are to their brands. Quickly, this is how it works. Here's, here's the MyBlocks application. Users will locate the QR code, capture the QR code, and decipher the QR code using the MyBlocks application. They will then be able to send that QR code to their Facebook or to any social network, and therefore, the actual advertisement becomes viral. Companies can benefit by receiving real-time dynamic data analytics, information, and feedback about QR code captures and users via the MyBlocks.com website. This will be the primary source of revenue for MyBlocks.com. Thank you for your time. We look forward to helping you catalog your lifestyle. Uh, why are people going to install this app on their phone? Because um, it allows them, so essentially a QR code you typically have embedded in an advertisement promotion or something like that. You walk down the street in New York, you see a new pair of sneakers on a billboard, there's a QR code, capture the QR code, it's a 20% discount on the, new, on the new pair of Nike sneakers that you see. That incentivizes somebody to capture the QR code, utilize it, purchase the sneakers on their phone via the website and so forth. Also, as a follow-up, uh, it's the same concept of kind of Foursquare. The same reason why people want to tell you where they're eating and what they're doing on a Friday night. It's an engagement with brands, engagement with consumers. Um, just a new way of advertising. Thanks. Next up is Siren Alerts. Let's say you go 
to a restaurant, you're given something that looks not unlike one of these, a restaurant pager. Now these things get lost, damaged, stolen. They run between 50 and 90 bucks. I think there's a better way. My solution is Siren Alerts. It's a software slash mobile application. Customer checks in with the host. When it's their turn to be served, they're sent a text message. Uh, mobile application users, um, smartphone users rather, can download a mobile application that will allow them to see a list of where they are in real time and when it is their time to be served, as well as an average wait time. So the market as of 2008 was $2.1 billion for pagers, but that's falling rapidly. Everybody's got one of these. Subscription-based business model, monthly or perhaps annually. The advantages to this, it's practical, it's simple, it's scalable. Uh, it will improve customer satisfaction, and it will reduce costs by, for the business by not having to purchase and maintain the papers. Stop. Stop. This seems to be all about uh, sort of market penetration. How are you going to get restaurants and other places like that to, to start supporting uh, an app like this? Sure. I think the, uh, one of the big things is customer satisfaction to say, um, this is a way to maximize efficiency and to monitor input for the business. And how many times have you been to a restaurant where you know, you've gone up to the host and they've said there will be a 45 minute wait time and you'll go somewhere else? You know you don't want to you don't want to use uh, you don't want to wait that long and you've got better things to do with your time. So I think that angle of it would be make it very appealing. <coughs> Pocket blue light. Pocket blue light here. Alright, we're gonna skip pocket blue light. The next up is Ascapy. Hi, I'm Wei and I'm the co-founder of Ascapy. Ascapy is the most fun way to ask your friends for help. So we noticed that people don't like asking for help much. They're either too shy don't want to bug their friends, or if they think they can handle it. But at the same time, we love helping our friends. So there's a huge gap here. We love to help, yet we don't like to ask. Askapade bridges this gap by building a social game around asking your friends for help. At Askapade, <laughs> you can send a request to your friends for help and keep track of who's helped you with what. But here's what makes Askapade more fun than Facebook questions and Yahoo answers. Your friends can thank you with virtual gifts. So the more helpful you are, the more gifts you collect. And then you can share this page on Facebook to show off how helpful you are. Askapay turns helping your friends into a fun and addictive game so you can get the help you need and have a great time doing it. So sign up at askapay.com now. Thanks. What's your revenue model? Um, so two different ideas we had. One of them is premium gifts. So each gift is not like a just a random icon, it's a gift and a gift set, because sets are a lot more compelling to collect as a game mechanic. Mm -hmm. So we, we're thinking of having either, each one of the gifts is a premium gift, so that's one way to make money. The other way is we have enough users, we could have maybe gift sets sponsored by different companies. For example, like Pepsi could sponsor a <laughs> Pepsi gift set, which like, each, each gift will be a Pepsi gift. So those are two different ideas for now. Next up is Yo Show. Hello, my name is Tony Sparks. Yosho is a, a revolutionary social networking site that will bring marketing to the common man and allow him to prosper through his endeavors. Yosho will provide users with online community where they can affect millions while also making millions. Users will make money by getting other users to watch commercials before downloading or watching content. Content can be anything from amateur videos, documents from tutors, music from musicians, or software. Yosho will basically change the music industry and the market market in the uh, online marketplace. Yosho will start off on Duke's campus, so it will only be extremely appealing to local advertisers. Uh, time is money. Why waste it on Facebook? We can make it on Yosho. Affect millions, make millions. And Yosho is Yosho for show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Tony, I liked your ending a lot. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's very exciting. Um, how, how are you going to overcome um, some of the troubles that other ad-supported content sites um, have run into? So what's different about your model that um, well, is going to compel people to watch advertising that's valuable enough to pay for? Well, I would attract a lot of users simply because uh, users make money, uh, just like a, like a Facebook account where like you know this is your profile. Uh, these are slideshow uh, profiles, uh, so basically they uh, play advertisements, also your pictures. And if somebody clicks right there on the Jimmy John's logo, and Jimmy John sells something, you can make money. But also like uh, the content right there, let's say that was a video, um, uh, then like right before the video plays, there'd be a commercial. So like every time a commercial plays, the user makes money. The user makes money. Yeah, got it. Thanks. <laughs> Envision a world was a digital landscape where solid walls become canvas for virtual graphics. My name is Jason Jian lead design of Incadence, and we're using the technology to transform this, a busy street, into this. The right is your personal view into the digital dimension. Your cell phone provides a viewfinder to watch this. Geographical locations of interest are automatically tagged, and any relevant information, like distance away, is brought up on screen. This means that restaurants can automatically broadcast in virtual space their seating capacity. Their special of the day. Restaurants can broadcast their daily deals, their uh, gas prices. The possibilities are limitless. Our technology delivers time sensitive, location based data beacons that companies can set up to track business. And with your support tonight, uh, we can be the first into this market. Driving companies is the easy part. No one wants to be left behind in the analog world when all of their competitors are in this digital space where users think it's fun to go out and see just what is there that they can't see with their normal eye. Instead, they hold up their phone. Instantly, a new world appears. The business model is advertising as well as any relevant information. A club might set up a data beacon advertising its newest party on Friday night. Automatically, anyone with a viewfinder can identify it and see it. You know, again, restaurants broadcasting their deals, broadcasting their specials. Um, and also, individual users can set up their own data beacons. If I want to create an event that I'm hosting at a specific location, automatically people can tell how far they're away from it, how many people are there, any information I want to put up there. Also, our platform, uh, we, we intend to make a very modular platform that will allow different industries to use the product in very different ways. Uh, so, as we roll out different modules for different types of information. <laughs> How many times have you found yourself sitting at home trying to decide on the best place to go that night? Which bar, which club, especially if you're in a big city, you can spend forever driving around trying to find parking. Um, and uh, it, it can just be a tremendous hassle. And then when you get there, uh, you find that the line is out the door, or worse, that there's, there's nobody there anyway. Because of that, we've come up with iNight. Um, iNight is an app for your, <laughs> for your smartphone using existing technologies and the wisdom of the crowd to tell you about the best, which is the best place to go. The way that it works is you'll, the app will bring up a list of nearby <coughs> bars using your GPS location click on one of them, it's going to bring up a message board for that particular bar where other users are posting real-time generated content telling you about that particular bar. Is this bar hopping? Is it dead? And so it's very <coughs> useful for you in order to manage your time better. Um, and the great thing is that it's not capital intensive with about $4,000. We can cover our development costs. And we think um, moving forward because it's so easily monetizable that we can reach uh, break-even point in about half a year. So we think there's an unmet need here that I and I can fill. So this sounds like it's sort of like Yelp, but real time. 
um, where people are sort of posting things real time. Uh, I, I don't think you'd be able to do that with $4,000, but the, provided that you could, it seems like the biggest value is going to be from actually getting users to start posting. So how are you going to incent users to start posting and why would they care? So it's a great question. We were thinking about it. And we basically are launching a concentrate in three cities, Tel Aviv, New York, and Rome Chapelis. Part of our budget goes into development and it's very cheap because it's existing technology to just combine what's already exists and part of the budget goes for promotion. We indicated social, let's say, people who are club promoters who are already going out a lot and people are following them and by by paying them an annual fee each month, they will use the app. People will follow them also going to use this app. And also there is another structure that we're going to thinking about giving credit points. Each one who uses this app gets some kind of credit that eventually, it's also like a credit promotion that you get, like, for example, a free drink if you get enough points credit using it. Just one second. Please. Right, thank you. Do you have a busy schedule? Are you prematurely losing hair and have a fish that looks like that? <laughs> if yes, then MoxMe is what you need. MoxMe works on top of different applications like Google, Facebook, school databases, and mobile devices. And it extracts information from these applications, adds its own secret sauce to it to give you a single cross-platform calendar for your entire family. Our product is ready, and as we speak, is being implemented by an entire town, consisting of over 28,000 students, four schools, one state university, and a community center. Imagine a professor who can use a single platform to schedule classes with her students, to check her husband's calendar, to track her son's soccer practice, and receive alerts from the community center. MoxMe drastically improves the quality of communication while saving you time and money. So while it may not restore your hair, it will definitely restore some sanity to your schedules and your lives. Thank you. Can you tell us um, how you're going to make money with the model? Absolutely. Uh, we're actually studying different revenue generating models right now, but just to give you a, a taste of what the market looks like, um, we, in our initial research, it's been revealed that a lot, of, most of the parents out there who have children who are studying in K through 12 grades are willing to pay $9.99 per year for this service where it aggregates the calendar for the kids at school and it presents, the, presents it to them in a, in a nice manner. Um, and U.S. Census survey uh, data shows that there's roughly 60 million parents out there with children in grades K through 12. So right, that right there is a $600 million market for you. And it's roughly all profit. There's hardly any, any cost over here. Scaling this, this technology, this product, is, is very easy. It's already being done. The beta test is out there. And we're on our way to doing bigger and better things. Next up is Romania. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ready, right? Yeah. How many of you guys have heard of Groupon? Show of hands. You should have. Groupon has been valued at over one and a quarter billion dollars. Now, because of this, over a hundred Groupon copycat sites have popped up, all with their own daily deals. Now, this is great for you guys. You guys can go every morning and look at a hundred new <laughs> cool places and products in your city to try for 50 to 90 percent off. But realistically, are you going to go to a hundred different sites to look at a hundred different deals? Are you? No, no. I'm not. No. You're going to go to Redimio. Redimio is going to aggregate all of those deals for you. Uh, Redimio is also going to show you only the deals that you love using an Amazon like top secret uh, algorithm. And uh, so if you love Italian food, you're going to see Piazza Italia, but not pole dancing classes for 75% off. Unless, of course, that's what you're into. <laughs> if that's what he's into. <laughs> How does the business model, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of early in, the, in these daily deal business, businesses now, so there's a lot of clones popping up, but 
<coughs> how does the business model work if there's a consolidation and a shakedown to just a couple players? It's <coughs> a good question. So, so uh, at this point, uh, nine. So, so you're right. At this point, nine players really make up most of the daily deals. Um, if if we were to if they were to consolidate, we would we would uh, continue to do affiliate fees. That's how we make money with those players. So uh, as of right now, we have an affiliate fee contract with every single uh, pl a player on Redeemio except for Groupon. Groupon's a little intimidated by us. Uh, <laughs> our board uh, secondly, we we because we understand the behavior of, of our subscribers, we know exactly what they like. We have our own deals as well. So uh, we fill in the gaps that we see with daily deals, and we offer our own Redeemio deals. We've been generating a lot of revenue that way for about a month now. Thank you. So this is our uh, last pitch of the evening, I think. Right. Uh, it's called Emu. Whenever you're ready. Let's say you have a two-year-old iPhone and you're ready to upgrade to the latest and greatest iPhone 4. The old phone still works great, but how do you know how much money it's worth? A search on eBay shows that there are hundreds of auctions for similar phones, and a Google search yields dozens of companies that will pay you for your phone. But do you really want to go through all that work to maximize your profit? Enter Emu. With Emu, you can compare prices, you can compare offers for your phone, much the way that Kayak lets you compare prices on airline uh, flights. Uh, and you can uh, get the information to make this very important decision. It can cost you up to $141 to choose the wrong site to sell your phone. Uh, Emu will plans to generate revenue through a lead generation business model. We're looking for $5,000 to get a beta site up and running so that you and the 285 million other cell phone users in the US can uh, be smart about turning your old phone into good money. How do you make money? Uh, well, part of the money would be based on, as I said, a lead generation model. So we have affiliates in these sites. Uh, there are dozens of sites that uh, are in the same uh, in the same space of buying um, not end of life products, but products that uh, that are still usable in terms of used electronics. And um, I'm sure that uh, if we have a comparison site that they would not want to be left behind and not be among the deals that their users are considering. So uh, it would be based on how much traffic we can drive to those sites. Thank you. All right, so this is the time when uh, you vote. Uh, your favorite team while the judges tally up the score. So simply all I have to do is uh, just add up to the top of star among the five of you and that'll be the winner. So the number that you want to text is 22333. Three, three. And uh, if you want to vote for your team, this is the keyword that you uh, punch in. So I'll just uh, kind of scroll up and down a little bit uh, for the next uh, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll stay here for a You can change the zoom on the page. So yeah, you can zoom. Control. Yeah, there we go. You guys still see? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. You guys still yeah. see? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Who is their binoculars? Yeah. I'm getting scrolled down. You make it bigger. <laughs> Number two, two, three, three, three. So again, the number that you want to text to is two, two, three, three, three. And you should get a confirmation when you vote. So please vote once and only if you're in the room. So before we. Uh, Okay. Yeah, what oh, yeah. Just wanted to remind you guys of uh, the opportunity to participate in the, the Duke Startup Challenge through the Executive Summary Competition. Uh, again, you could uh, submit a two-page Executive Summary uh, in uh, January or, or February timeframe. 
for a chance to open up to $25,000 in April. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.